Hello, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is our uh, last of our lightning talk series on experience first data center networking series. Uh, today, we will talk about Abstra, the values in integration. Uh, basically, the focus is automation with Abstra. My name is Majid Ansari. I'm an architect on Cloud Vertical. Uh, and today with me, um, I have uh, Kelvin Remsberg. Uh, he is uh, one of the consulting engineers and specialist in automation practice. Um, he participates with uh, various customers on on automation discussions, and he will go over uh, you know some of the details on uh, automation with Abstra. Uh, so let's jump uh, right in. And uh, first thing, I think I'll quickly I think uh, talk about the agenda for the discussion today. Uh, we'll recap uh, what we talked about in our first two sessions, uh, which we had with Jeff Doyle. Um, then uh, I'll quickly uh, introduce our topic today on uh, automation uh, and uh, EVP and fabric operational decisions. So basically, we'll talk about uh, what are the key characteristics we are looking in your fabric management solution when it comes to automation. Um, and then Kelvin will go over and expand on that topic and talk about uh, you know automation for EVP and operations and integration. So recapping on uh, what we talked in our first two uh, first two uh, lightning talks, um, and I'm not going to go in detail about what we already discussed, but I'm just going to quickly uh, provide a summary. So in the first session, we we talked about uh, what kind of characteristics you need from uh, a day zero day one perspective, where you're looking at uh, you know architecting and design, and then uh, deploying your fabric, and we established that you know you need a solution that's multi-vendor and then it also goes beyond uh, uh, you know just swapping uh, CLIs with clicks uh, right you you actually go beyond and do an internet based approach uh, where you actually are doing a lot of meaningful tasks in minimal steps uh, that way you can uh, quickly complete your task and not only that that it makes easier for you to provision it also uh, provides you a single pane of glass that uh, your architects as well as your uh, operators, right, can see through, and then there would be a feedback loop that uh, that you will uh, you'll operate through, verifying everything at every step, um, and then making sure your fabric is operating the way you intended it to be. So that was our day one, um, and then uh, in in our second lightning talk, uh, we talked about more on importance of day two and supporting um, operations in a way. Uh, that's you know meaningful uh, and then that's you know relevant in uh, today's age because there are a lot of challenges and different challenges in the network uh, when it comes to uh, you know things changing quickly um, and then you have to support different like environments where you have to support legacy uh, application as well as model applications and we established uh, how um, gathering analytics and then de deriving knowledge from you know telemetry um, and uh, and giving you uh, the information in full context so that you can use it uh, use it uh, efficiently, right? Um, and, and then uh, we also talked about uh, you know our ability to support your changes in the network, whether it's a maintenance that is planned or uh, a link or a device going down. How do we make sure uh, that uh, what it does after the recovery is exactly what you expect it to be? It is done in as quickly as possible. Um, and and then uh, we actually can provide you all that uh, uh, re reliable way of you know going through changes in your network, um, and then uh, importance of that. So that that covered our day zero and uh, day one, and then day two operations and day two operations plus. Uh, uh, today's topic is now we're going to focus on automation and why automation is important and uh, what uh, what kind of things you need to look into your fabric management solution right um, I, I think you we all would agree that when you deploy a network or when you deploy a network management solution uh, you are not op, uh, you're not op operating in in a bubble right you actually are part of a bigger business um, and then you have a, a bigger infrastructure that's bigger than your network um, and you need to be part of it. You cannot be just thinking of your network as an independent entity, uh, because uh, with, uh, if you want efficiency and if you want to utilize the tools that you already built for your bigger infrastructure, for example, take uh, a typical data center where you will have you know, 40 servers in a rack and there'll be only two switches. So there is an infrastructure already in place that is managing those 40 servers and then the applications that run on them. Um, 
and it would be very efficient for you if you can use a similar infrastructure, maybe expertise you have in um, uh, your ability to develop those applications using the same kind of APIs or at least uh, the programming language of your choice for your automation. Uh, your network management will uh, will actually uh, gel well with uh, your existing system, so it's just going to make it more efficient and and, um, and more scalable for you. Uh, and that's one of the key characteristics I think uh, you need to look into a fabric management solution. Um, now the APIs, I, I think uh, APIs needs to be easy to use and uh, they they need to be integrated using your preferred um, programming language or infrastructure of choice. Um, and, and then once you have that established, that uh, easy to use APIs and that can give you that rich set of functionality that you, know, you need, it will just make it easier for you to integrate your uh, fabric management solution in your environment. Um, and not only that, um, the underlying infrastructure that that you need, right? It shouldn't be restricting. And and one of the things that uh, we talked in earlier talks, like for example, Abstra uses uh, this graph database. Now, graph database allows you to integrate and query things for which you your relationships were not like available to you before. So like if it was a relational database and then you were building tables, uh, you would restrict based on what you know ahead of time. Whereas a graph database uh, would offer you that flexibility because there you don't have to do know all the relationship and don't have to build table based on what you know. It could change over time. So not only you have rich set of APIs um, and simpler to use APIs, you also need infrastructure that allows you to kind of grow with uh, the new things that come into picture. Um, so, you know, if you combine all these things, um, you build your solution and you also have to kind of think of it as like how my operator is going to use it so they can use the same uh, same thing that they use for bigger infrastructure. They can use it for a network. Uh, you will have a cohesive solution that will be easy to integrate your environment. Um, and I'll with this, I will pass it on to Kelvin to just, you know, kind of expand it. Um, how in uh, Abstra context, how these things are, are relevant, what Abstra does, and, and then how how it helps you, you know, grow with ground uh, without growing pains. Uh, to you, uh, Kelvin, to kind of expand on this topic, I'll stop sharing and then you can share your screen. All right. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Calvin Rimsberg, and I am a, a global architect within the sales organization. And my primary focus is helping customers get up and running with network automation, trying to help them understand what some of the value propositions and more importantly, what kind of integrations they can build to have success using the automation capabilities within our platforms. Now today specifically, we're gonna be focusing on Abstra. Now Abstra actually has two separate APIs that we had just discussed. There is a traditional REST API where we can communicate with the Abstra system over HTTP. There's also a GraphQL API that we can access some of the more difficult queries uh, to, to get really detailed information about uh, the data center fabric. Now today, I'm gonna specifically be talking about the REST API because that's what we see most commonly when customers want to build integrations. Now, it should be noted that 100% of the things that AppSure does from the web user interface is driven through APIs in the background. That is to say, any type of operation you would do inside of the AppSure user interface, whether you're adding new VLANs or you're building a new data center blueprint, or maybe you're just monitoring the actual health of the environment, there is a native API for every single one of those calls that happens within the GUI, which means we can capture that API and actually build automation around it. This helps us build integrations into tools and software that we already have in our environment with minimal effort. Now today, I'm gonna to be showcasing an example where a customer was having success where they were using ServiceNow to perform their day zero and day two operations through uh, ServiceNow. Now we're gonna showcase this just in a little bit, but it's important to just kind of have the roadmap here uh, in front of you to understand exactly how these pieces are coming together. We're actually leveraging Ansible for the heavy lifting within the environment. 
this is almost a no brainer in, in these days because Ansible has such a profound impact within not only servers, but also network and automation that it makes sense to build an automation framework based on uh, one of the more prevalent tools out there today. So what's going to happen is that a user is going to fill out a request. Now this again, this could be building a new environment. This can be just typical day two operations of adding VLANs, et cetera. They're going to perform that request inside of ServiceNow. And ServiceNow is going to send that information over to a Ansible server through the Ansible REST API. And then Ansible is going to do a few things. It's going to check in to GitHub to make sure it's got the latest copy of the project. And then it's going to talk to our network source of truth. Now, in my environment, I'm using a tool called Netbox, but you could use another tool called Nautobot, or maybe you're using some kind of uh, monitoring system like SolarWinds. The point is, is that there's information about your environment that the automation needs to have in order to be successful. So Ansible is going to query around, make sure, again, it's got the latest copy of the code. It's going to make sure it knows everything about your environment. And then it's going to be performing some provisioning tasks over into the AppStruct controller. And these, again, 100% uh, of the operations that we would have typically done had we been logged in through the web user interface. And then when we're done, we're going to be sending some information over to the team so that everyone knows when a change has been made within our environment. Now, in this case, I'm using Slack, but this could be a text message. This could be an email. This could be Microsoft Teams. The point is, is that it doesn't really matter where you're trying to send the message to. As long as there's an API that's listening and available for us, we can take advantage of that and build these almost closed loop automation uh, opportunities for us. So let's go ahead and start with our ServiceNow interface. I've created a fictitious company here called Redtail Network, and they operate in many different capacities. They have a campus network that's managed through Juniper's Mist. They're using the 128T SD-WAN. But in, in, in context of this conversation, we're going to be talking a little bit about the data center. So let's move over into the data center dashboard to see what the network team sees whenever they log into ServiceNow. So all the team members immediately have visibility into any outstanding tickets that might be uh, within their data center environment. They can also see if there are any anomalies within the production data center. Now, in my case, you can see that we have no problems just yet. We will be creating some problems here today. But it's important to note that users of, of ServiceNow will immediately get this information without having to visit the AppStra interface. And probably even more importantly, without having to understand networking nuances within data center fabrics. As we all know, VXLAN EVPN is an amazing technology, but it's very, very complicated. And a data modeled fabric management tool like AppStra really helps abstract some of that complexity with them. But here we're even uh, uh, abstracting it even more by reaching into the AppStra's APIs and grabbing the health of our data center fabric. Now, just to give you an example, this is my current data center environment that I have. It is a live AppStra environment the couple spines and three leaf switches right here. And you can see that all the anomalies that would have typically shown up are, are right here within the dashboard. This is the information that we're getting through the API and we're tunneling that data back into ServiceNow. And that's what you see these counters right here for. So really, really great place to get the visibility of your data center fabric. You could extend this, uh, this dashboard to your server teams to your application teams, to really anyone that likes to call up the network team and blame the data center as being the problem for their application performance. This is a really great way of getting all the networking nuance out of the way and just presenting the raw facts to the users. Now, what's really great about this dashboard is that we're not just using it to track data center events and in open incidents at the time. We can also use it as a launching pad for all of our network day-to-day -day tasks. So in this case, I'm going to visit the network automation panel, and we can see that this organization has many different self-service portals for different types of tasks within the environment, but we're focusing here on the data center. Now, when we visit this, we can see that we've got a couple of options available for this. If we wanted to, we could build out a full data center fabric using the AppStra Blueprint Generator. 
where we just basically fill in some basic information about the type of platform that we're using, the loopback addresses, if they have any specific autonomous system numbers that they want to use, what type of data center fabric platform. Uh, as you all know, uh, Appstra supports uh, almost any data center vendor under the sun, so it's important that we give those types of options to the users. But in this case, let's talk about a more traditional day two operation. One of the more common tasks, believe it or not, still in, in uh, 2022 is that we're still creating VLANs across our data center fabric. So let's go ahead and perform this task by leveraging network automation. We'll visit this self-service portal here, and you can see that we've taken all the network nuanced information, things like what type of routing in, or what routing instance would you like this v, uh, this new VLAN to be uh, within the overlay? We also need to pass in the name of a VLAN. Now, in this case, uh, let's see. I'm going to call this VLAN Thursday because that's where we're recording this. And for the VLAN ID, I'm just going to go ahead and leave in uh, 11, but we'll go ahead and give it the VXLAN network identifier of 10,000. And passing in an IP prefix, we'll do uh, 105 slash 24 and we'll give it the dot one for the gateway. So you can see with this self-service portal of ServiceNow, we're, we're asking the user for the bare minimum information. What do they need to do to be successful in this job? We're not asking them to be experts in either Cisco CLI or Junos CLI. We're not asking them to have even all the nuanced information about a data center fabric they can still have success with their day-to-day -day job by leveraging network automation to abstract all the complexities within this. So in this case, we've created a workflow that another teammate would uh, view or they would first they would receive some kind of message notification in ServiceNow to say, hey, you got a teammate that's looking to build a new data center VLAN. We would like for you to review it. And they would come, they would visit their ServiceNow portal, and they would get all the information here passed into a ticket assigned to them. Now, what they would do is they would go and they would review this request one last time. They can see the data. They can add any comments uh, that they see fit, maybe a change approval number or some kind of code of some sort. The idea here is that we have an, an approval process where we can have an audit from a local teammate or um, or maybe just be able to have a documentation as to who approved this change and who had initiated it. Just again, for auditing and sanity purposes. Now, what you'll note back here over at Appstra, we don't have any uncommitted changes, and that's because we haven't clicked this approval button just yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to click on the approve button and what that's going to do is going to compile all the information that we had passed in the form and it's going to send it over into Ansible. Now let's go ahead and check out Ansible and see what's going on. If I look at my jobs right up here, we can see that we've got a job running. It's called create a VLAN. And if we look into the details, we'll actually see the information that was passed in through the ServiceNow form the name of the VLAN, the VLAN ID, the prefix. Remember all that information that we had filled it into the form. Now I can see that this all in all took 11 seconds to complete. Uh, and here we can, we can dig into any of these API calls and kind of ferret out what the, was actually going on. But probably more interesting, let's return back to the service now, or I'm sorry, to the Appstra. And you can see we now have an uncommitted change within the environment. So the way that Appstra works, if you're unfamiliar, and this is a blessing if you're coming into from an automation perspective, is that Appstra works in a very similar way that the Juno's operating system works, meaning that you stage your proposed changes in, in type of a candidate configuration where you have another opportunity to review the data, commit it, and if that is a problematic change, actually roll it back. This is incredibly important in a data center fabric management tool, and this is what we're leveraging within the automation. We're taking advantage of this review process. Now, if I really wanted to, we could go down and look into the full diff of what's actually taking place, but suffice to say, here we're gonna be creating a new VLAN called Thursday. Uh, we're creating a new connectivity template, which is effectively an interface template and we're uh, creating a new VLAN ID. We can see the prefix information, route target, 
the VLAN ID, all again, all that information was passed in through ServiceNow. So this is one really great way of leveraging network automation for a common day two task. I just rolled back that configuration. So uh, it now no longer exists within the Appstra system. Let's talk about another real common task, and that would be managing VLANs on a trunk, specifically for something like a VMware host, for instance, right? As new applications come into the environment, you wanna be able to quickly update or remove VLANs that are on a interface uh, based on a template. Now, in this case, I have a connectivity template. It's got a couple of storage VLANs. One is the native VLAN for iSCSI and another VLAN for NFS traffic. Well, let's return back over into ServiceNow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new VLAN onto this trunk for MySQL database. So we'll follow the same process as we had before when we created a new VLAN, and that is by visiting our data center service catalog and then opening up the, uh, the self-service portal, this time for managing VLANs on a trunk. And what we need to do is we need to declare which blueprint or which data center fabric we would like to perform this task on. We would like to know whether or not we want to add a VLAN or remove or unform a trunk. In this case, I'm gonna add it and we need to add the VLAN ID. In this case, I'm gonna select MySQL database. And uh, finally, I just need to select the connectivity template. So whether or not, uh, what kind of virtualization host we're using. In this case, we're gonna select a VMware host and click order now. Now, again, if you can think about the power, not only of extrapolating the network complexities of a VXN eVPN fabric, but what we're effectively doing is we're creating a self-service catalog so that network operators or possibly application developers within your environment can perform complex tasks with the appropriate auditing and approval processes without having to know very much about how networks actually operate. Now, in this case, let's visit this request that came in for us. And we're again, consistent approval process. Everything is consistent that we're doing here. It's one of the nice things about network automation is that despite the workflows being very different and, and workflow being what kind of task you're trying to accomplish, you can create similar workflow environments through a tool like ServiceNow so that everyone feels comfortable, it's familiar. They know exactly where to go and they know how to fill in these forms because it's very similar to their traditional uh, operations within the tool. We'll go ahead and again, click this approval button. And again, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna compile the information that came in from the form and send it over into Ansible. We'll take a sneak peek at what's going on over here. Here we can see we have a playbook running called Manage a Trunk. And if we dig into the details, we can see uh, hidden information about VLAN IDs untagged. This information is actually sourced from the ServiceNow catalog. We just got to abstract some of the more complex UUIDs, et cetera. Now, if we go back to the output, I can see that this was completed. This took 10 seconds to complete. Let's go check in on Appstra. And over on Appstra, if I just open up this VMware host connectivity template yet again, I can now see that the MySQL database VLAN has been added to my tagged trunk. Now, if you're unfamiliar with connectivity templates, effectively what's happening is that when we commit this change that's staged right now in Appstra, any interface in our data center that was previously associated to the VMware connectivity template will now have this VLAN automatically pushed down to it so that applications can come up and start actually performing the task that they were set out to do. So gone are the days of knowing where in my environment are all my VMware servers, which interfaces and uh, which VLANs is, are, are we passing on this trunk. We can leverage the connectivity templates to completely remove us from that equation. And then we can take the advantage of the API to actually perform the task to make adjustments to those as we see fit. If we move back over to our uncommitted panel here. Uh, we can see that we've updated the connectivity template for the VMware host. And again, this is exactly what we expected. And I'll go ahead and commit that change to make it run in production. Now, I promised earlier we're going to we're going to break something, and this is a great opportunity for that. I'm going to go ahead and insert a static change into my data center fabric. 
Now, what's going to happen from an APSHA perspective is that this will directly conflict with the data model that was derived for the data center fabric. Again, we're not building a model just for the devices. We're looking at this from an intent-based networking perspective as a holistic fabric data model. And this static change that's going to be made on one of the devices will be a conflict with that, uh, that data center fabric. And so now, if we return over to Appstra, actually, let's go back to a ServiceNow portal first. If I remove back to my campus network and head over to the data center dashboard, what I should see is within about a couple of minutes, I do have some caching taking place on here to make the uh, UI pop up just a little bit faster. What we will see is an anomaly uh, peek its head into the data center fabric as that, that, that static configuration is actually applied. So while we wait for that, uh, that detection to be uh, made, let's also showcase how you can leverage Slack and chat ops to also interface with your Appstra fabric. So what I have here is a Slack workspace that all my data center team is on and that we use this to actually communicate between each other. Uh, but in, what we can also do is take advantage of the API that we expose on Appstra and actually build integrations into our chat systems. So for instance, let's say that we get a call at 3 a.m. because we're on call and we're told that SAP is down and the network is always obviously blamed uh, for this type of situation. So rather than us getting up uh, and pulling out our laptop, jumping on the corporate VPN, trying to log into Appstra, trying to make sense of what's going on, and understand whether or not the data center is at fault. What we can do instead is just simply open up our Slack client, whether it's on our phone or our desktop. In this case, we'll be issuing a command to the Appstra bot. What will happen is that we get a, a prompt that says what kind of request, and from here, we'll just say, give us the health of the data center. And then it'll ask us, well, which data center would you like to check? We'll check in our eVPN demo and hit the execute. Now, again, I am not having to understand data center fabric technology. I don't even to know, I don't even need to be able to spell VXLAN. What we can do is we can leverage this, these APIs to get health information from our data center and provide access to it for anyone within the organization that has the rights to. Now here, we got back in our Slack client within just a few seconds, some information from the system, and I can see that there's a configuration error within our data center fabric. That's exactly what we expected because there was a static route injected into our data center. If we return back over to our ServiceNow portal, and if I refresh my page, remember that this is the home landing page for my data center operations team. Here we can see that we'll have some anomalies show up and it is exactly what we expected, right? We have a configuration issue within the environment and anyone that just logged into ServiceNow or anyone that's watching this page will be able to detect, yes, there's something wrong with our environment. So they can interface through with Appstra through the APIs by leveraging tools like ServiceNow, or you can build integrations into more common tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams. So with that, that's the end of this discussion on kind of the art of possibility with building network automation for day two operations. So with that, I'm going to turn by MacBike over. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. I think uh, uh, you actually did a great job articulating, you know, value of uh, the automation with Appstra, how uh, and the art of possibility that you said, like what's possible using different tools, um, and then that I, I think you know would uh, would clearly articulate. Um, how uh, Appstra can integrate easy in, into your existing environments and ServiceNow being popular, Ansible being popular, um, and then Slack, on the other hand, totally diverse tools, uh, but uh, power of automation you know, makes you integrate Appstra in all of them. Uh, so uh, thanks for that uh, great discussion. I think you know, if uh, our customers are interested uh, in talking about more, uh, more about this thing, I think you know reach out to your account teams and then we can we'll be happy to go over the details. Uh, but in in uh, in uh, summarizing this, what I would say uh, for your when you're evaluating your fabric management solutions, uh, basically what uh, what based on what we talked today, right? what you what you need is an easy to use rich set of APIs 
uh, so that you can use uh, your own environment and then integrate uh, Appstra uh, or network management tool into your environment. Um, and not only you need uh, APIs performing your uh, day one provisioning um, thing, uh, it can also help you with your day two and um, day two plus operations where you know, like you spend a lot of time during that mode. Uh, it's equally important to have APIs that 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 do that, right? And then, uh, last but not least, I'll basically use the same conclusion that I used my in my previous uh, uh, two lightning talks. Uh, for your fabric management needs, you need a unified solution uh, that gives you seamless automation for you know throughout your uh, network lifecycle, whether it's day zero, day one, or day two plus. Um, and then you need a unified um, view for both your operations and architect uh, uh, team uh, so that you get smooth operation in your network. And uh, with this uh, talk, I think we we provided you a lot of uh, examples and uh, and arguments to you know uh, to suggest that Abstra actually uh, does have all these characteristics and it will it will do very well uh, for your network management need um, and and especially in a multi vendor network um, you, you you will be you will be very happy with uh, with Abstra and. Um, also, I think as we talked, uh, uh, you know, uh, next steps wise, uh, as I said, please contact us uh, if you like to talk more. But in the meantime, if you want to learn and uh, and explore yourself, uh, you can also use our training on Juniper Training Portal, or uh, there is a YouTube playlist that talks about you know topics like this that we discussed today, and there is also a virtual lab um, that uh, that you can reserve uh, and then do your own experiments. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today and then uh, going through this discussion with us um, and, and enjoy uh, enjoy uh, the learnings and uh, and then uh, good luck we are, uh, with your uh, uh, network operations. Thank you.